Obesity hypoventilation syndrome, or OHS, is a serious condition that affects many people. It's characterized by obesity and chronic daytime hypoventilation. This presentation is for educational purposes only. Obesity hypoventilation syndrome, OHS, is a sleep-related breathing disorder. It's characterized by obesity with a BMI of 30 or more, daytime hypercapnia with partial pressure of arterial carbon dioxide over 45 mmHg, and sleep-disordered breathing. This occurs without other causes like COPD or neuromuscular disease. The exact prevalence of OHS is unknown, with many cases undiagnosed. Risk increases with higher BMI, especially over 40. One-third of morbidly obese individuals have elevated CO2 levels. OHS is more common in men and typically diagnosed around age 52. Ethnic differences exist, with higher prevalence in black Americans and Asians developing OHS at lower BMIs. OHS results from a complex interplay of mechanical, neural, and hormonal factors. Excess body weight increases chest wall and abdominal pressure, reducing lung compliance and tidal volume, which raises the work of breathing. Altered central respiratory drive blunts the ventilatory response to elevated carbon dioxide, while leptin resistance diminishes the hormone's normal stimulatory effect on breathing, further worsening hypoventilation. Coexisting sleep-disordered breathing, present in most patients, amplifies nocturnal hypoventilation and oxygen desaturation. The resulting chronic hypoventilation leads to elevated partial pressure of arterial carbon dioxide, renal bicarbonate retention, and reduced chemoreceptor sensitivity, perpetuating daytime hypercapnia and hypoxemia. OHS leads to multiple systemic complications driven by chronic hypoxemia, hypercapnia, and inflammation. Persistent low oxygen levels cause pulmonary vasoconstriction, resulting in pulmonary hypertension, right ventricular strain, and core pulmonale. Hypoxemia stimulates erythropoietin release, leading to secondary polycythemia, while chronic CO2 retention contributes to morning headaches, cognitive impairment, and daytime somnolence. Oxidative stress and systemic inflammation promote endothelial dysfunction and accelerate atherosclerosis, and sympathetic overactivity results in systemic hypertension and arrhythmias. Metabolic dysregulation causes insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and dyslipidemia, while sleep fragmentation worsens fatigue and quality of life. If untreated, OHS increases the risk of recurrent hospitalizations, acute respiratory failure, and mortality. OHS presents with a combination of symptoms related to hypoventilation and sleep-disordered breathing. Patients commonly experience excessive daytime sleepiness, loud snoring, witnessed apneas, morning headaches, non-restorative sleep, poor concentration, fatigue, low mood, progressive shortness of breath, and reduced exercise tolerance. On examination, findings include obesity with shallow breathing, cyanosis or plethora due to chronic hypoxemia, signs of right heart failure such as peripheral edema and elevated jugular venous pressure, a flushed face and tremor from carbon dioxide retention, and marked sleepiness during evaluation. The diagnosis of OHS requires the presence of obesity with a body mass index of 30 kg per square meter or greater, daytime hypercapnia with an arterial PaCO2 above 45 mmHg, and evidence of sleep-disordered breathing after excluding other causes of hypoventilation, such as COPD or neuromuscular disease. Arterial blood gas typically shows chronic respiratory acidosis, while a serum bicarbonate level above 27 suggests chronic carbon dioxide retention and indicates the need for confirmation with arterial testing. Polysomnography confirms coexisting obstructive sleep apnea in most cases, and complete blood count may reveal polycythemia due to chronic hypoxemia. Additional evaluation should include echocardiography and basic laboratory studies to assess for pulmonary hypertension, right heart failure, and metabolic comorbidities. Arterial blood gas analysis in OHS typically reveals chronic compensated respiratory acidosis, characterized by elevated arterial carbon dioxide, increased bicarbonate from renal compensation, and a near-normal pH. During acute decompensation, an acute on chronic respiratory acidosis develops with a fall in pH and further carbon dioxide retention. When compensation is adequate, pH remains between 7.35 and 7.40 but drops during acute exacerbations. 
Pulmonary hypertension in OHS is classified as group 3 pulmonary hypertension, resulting from chronic lung disease and hypoxia. It should be suspected in patients with unexplained dyspnea, fatigue, edema, loud P2, or signs of right heart strain. Physical findings include elevated jugular venous pressure, peripheral edema, hepatomegaly, and a parasternal heave in core pulmonale or right heart failure. Diagnostic evaluation begins with ECG showing right axis deviation and right ventricular hypertrophy, chest X-ray with enlarged pulmonary arteries, and elevated BNP or NT pro BNP indicating right ventricular strain. Echocardiography estimates pulmonary artery pressures and reveals right ventricular dilation or dysfunction. Definitive diagnosis requires right heart catheterization demonstrating a mean pulmonary artery pressure of at least 25 mmHg with a normal pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, confirming precapillary pulmonary hypertension. The differential diagnosis of OHS includes several conditions that cause hypoventilation or sleep-related breathing abnormalities. COPD presents with airflow limitation, smoking history, and wheezing, but typically occurs in non-obese patients with obstructive spirometry findings. OSA involves nocturnal apnea without daytime hypercapnia. Restrictive chest wall disorders such as kyphoscoliosis cause reduced chest expansion and structural deformity, while neuromuscular disorders like myasthenia gravis and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis feature generalized weakness and abnormal nerve conduction. Hypothyroidism causes fatigue, weight gain, and bradycardia, but improves with thyroid replacement. Central hypoventilation results from brainstem lesions or idiopathic causes and is seen in patients with normal body mass index. Drug-induced hypoventilation from sedatives or opioids resolves after discontinuation without chronic carbon dioxide retention. Management of OHS focuses on correcting alveolar hypoventilation, relieving sleep-disordered breathing, and promoting weight loss. Treatment includes positive airway pressure, lifestyle changes, and possibly bariatric surgery. Preventing acute decompensations and managing comorbidities like pulmonary hypertension are also critical components of care. Weight reduction is crucial in managing OHS. Lifestyle changes involve calorie restriction and physical activity. Pharmacotherapy with GLP-1 agonists aids weight loss. Bariatric surgery is considered for patients with a BMI over 35 or 30 with comorbidities such as OHS. Positive airway pressure is a first-line treatment for OHS. Continuous positive airway pressure is the first-line option for stable ambulatory patients, especially those with coexisting moderate to severe obstructive sleep apnea, mild hypercapnia, and preserved ventilatory drive. It helps maintain airway patency, improve gas exchange, and reduce daytime sleepiness. Bilevel positive airway pressure is indicated for acute decompensated OHS, persistent hypercapnia despite CPAP use, or in patients without significant obstructive sleep apnea, as it provides additional ventilatory support. Endotracheal intubation with invasive mechanical ventilation is reserved for cases of BiPAP failure, severe hypoxemia, respiratory arrest, or inability to protect the airway, ensuring adequate ventilation and oxygenation during critical illness. Contraindications to PAP include inability to protect the airway, facial trauma, pneumothorax, and hemodynamic instability. Tracheostomy is considered in patients with refractory OHS who fail or cannot tolerate non-invasive positive pressure ventilation. It is also indicated in cases of severe core pulmonale unresponsive to positive airway pressure therapy, persistent hypercapnia, despite optimal weight loss and ventilation, non-adherence to outpatient therapy, or failed extubation following invasive ventilation. The procedure provides a definitive airway for long-term ventilatory support and helps reduce the work of breathing but does not correct hypoventilation unless connected to mechanical ventilation. It is reserved as a last resort, life-saving intervention when all non-invasive options have been exhausted. Oxygen therapy in OHS is indicated only when hypoxemia persists, defined by low arterial oxygen or oxygen saturation, despite optimal use of positive airway pressure. It should always be administered alongside positive airway pressure to prevent worsening carbon dioxide retention. 
Respiratory stimulants are reserved for patients with refractory hypercapnia who continue to have elevated carbon dioxide levels despite optimal PAP therapy and weight reduction, or for those unable to tolerate non-invasive ventilation. Agents such as acetazolamide, medroxyprogesterone acetate, and theophylline may be used short-term or experimentally to enhance ventilatory drive and improve gas exchange. Managing comorbidities in OHS involves addressing overlapping cardiometabolic and respiratory disorders to improve outcomes. OSA, present in most cases, is treated with positive airway pressure therapy, while obesity and metabolic syndrome require weight reduction through diet, exercise, or bariatric surgery. Systemic hypertension is managed with lifestyle modification and antihypertensive therapy, preferably ACE inhibitors or ARBs. Pulmonary hypertension and core pulmonale are treated by optimizing ventilation, using long-term oxygen therapy if hypoxemic, and controlling volume overload with diuretics. Type 2 diabetes management centers on glycemic control with metformin or GLP-1 agonists, and heart failure care involves maintaining euvolemia, optimizing cardiac medications, and ensuring adherence to PAP therapy. Patient education and follow-up are vital in OHS management. Counseling on PAP adherence, mask fit, and side effect management is essential. Regular follow-up with ABG or serum bicarbonate monitoring helps track PACEO2 trends. Encouraging vaccinations and conducting sleep studies if symptoms recur are also important. Acute decompensations in OHS is defined as acute on chronic hypercapnic respiratory failure, characterized by elevated carbon dioxide and low pH levels. It is commonly triggered by infection sedative use, diuretic overuse, heart failure, bronchospasm, poor adherence to positive airway pressure therapy, or weight gain. Patients typically present with severe dyspnea, respiratory distress, somnolence, confusion, tachycardia, hypertension, signs of right heart failure, cyanosis, and neurological symptoms such as headache or asterixis. Management includes hospital admission for close monitoring and ventilatory support, preferably in a high acuity setting, while avoiding oxygen therapy alone to prevent worsening carbon dioxide retention. The target oxygen saturation is maintained between 88 and 92 percent to ensure adequate oxygenation without suppressing the hypoxic drive. Non-invasive ventilation is the first-line treatment for acute decompensation in OHS with bi-level positive airway pressure preferred. Arterial blood gases should be reassessed within one to two hours to confirm improvement with a decrease in carbon dioxide and a rise in pH expected. Failure to correct acidosis, persistent hypoxemia, or intolerance to non-invasive ventilation requires escalation to intubation and invasive mechanical ventilation. Adjunctive measures in managing acute decompensations include treating precipitating factors like infection and heart failure. Diuretics manage volume overload. Avoiding respiratory depressants is crucial. VTE prophylaxis and early mobilization help prevent complications. These measures support comprehensive care for OHS patients. For more educational content, like, share, and subscribe to Quick IM with Dr. Aid. Your support helps us create even more valuable content for you.